So I'll tell the swamp donkey to sack it before I'll give her a tonk in the trailer's entrance and have a lick me yarbles. Oh, hello. Um, welcome back, people, to another video blog daily bot. Today's, uh, well, we'll start off. Today's soundtrack is Africa. As you can probably hear. From the PS3 game uh, Africa, or Hakuna Matata, as it was known in Japan. Uh, it's quite a relaxing one. Just gets me thinking, wouldn't it be nice to take a holiday? Just some time to get away from it all. Well, anyway, uh, today is the Blu-ray collection. That's right, Blu-ray! We're getting our modern and shit. Just have a quick, uh, it's a holiday themed video today. Got my beautiful, beautiful voice drowned now by the uh, music, do I? Alright, without much further ado, let's get cracking with the nagging. The first one Back to the Future Trilogy Limited Collector's Edition 25th Anniversary. Tin! Take off the uh, little dealy bops. And let's open the tin. What do you get with this? The uh, license plate from the DeLorean, well from Back to the Future 1, out of time. If, if you want to do the film bit. What else do you get? You get, just put the tin down so you can see. Great Scott! If your parents never met at the elephant under the enchanted I messed that one up. If your parents never meet under the enchanted under the oh, sod that. <laughs> what else you get? You get Pharmacy's flying saucer, Otis probably under observation at County Asylum from uh, the Hill Valley Telegraph, Monday, November 7th, 1955. It's quite a good mock up actually. The newspaper the people depend upon. 10 cents. Oil Giant admits new illegal gifts. I don't know. So there's that. There is also, which one's this? For some reason this one doesn't appear to have a date on it. But it is another official copy of a prop. This is the, another Hill Valley Telegraph clock tower, so by lining. Clock stopped at 10.04 p.m. But just the exact moment we send you and the DeLorean back to the future. Future boy. And yet another Hill Valley... Uh, no, this isn't Hill Valley Telegraph. This is... From Back to the Future 2. USA Today, Youth Jailed, Martin McFly Jr. arrested for theft. And on the other side, this is the only double-sided one. It's the other one, where the, obviously that, that's the one where uh, he gets arrested and then they change the timeline in Biff Griff. So he gets arrested. And what else is in the little tin of trickety doodles? Back to the Future movie poster and Another Back to the Future movie poster. Mm. Huh? Then you get a uh, reproduction of the photo of Marty and Doc taken 
before the clock tower gets built in 1885. The Grey Spots Almanac, 1950 to 2000, which helps Biff become the richest person in the world. It's even, it's actually a proper replica of the prop used. It's got, you know, little spotting results inside that were shown on screen. And this, this is awesome, quite possibly. No, quite possibly, it's very awesome. Blueprints of a time traveling DeLorean, complete with flux capacitor there. And what's this from? Yet another poster. Famous one everybody knows, and the 20th anniversary re release poster. I've got that one on my wall. If you would like to see, just up there, next to Ghostbusters. You also get some. Uh, these ones are always a pain to get out. Should have probably taken them out first, right? Some artwork postcards. The hoverboard, the Mattel hoverboard, Griff's hoverboard, and more hoverboard related shenanigans. And promo artwork postcards of the Lorian. I got this upside down. Yeah, I have. <laughs> DeLorean, another DeLorean. The DeLorean going back in time. Uh, there we are. Trying to get those right way around, so like trying to cut your hair in the mirror, you can't do it. And of course, the Blu ray. Uh, which folds out into a picture as such there. There you go, you can see it all there. The discs have all gone Marty as his various uh, that's my phone going off, back to the future theme tune if you can maybe tell. Just put that back in there. Putting it all back in the tin. The new game from Waddington's. Where kids get to put things in a tin. Just cause it's awesome. There we go, lovely jumps. Next one, Ghostbusters, yes. Everybody knows Ghostbusters, so I'll spend too long going on about this one. There's the disc, complete with advert for more stuff to buy. What's on there? Coming soon, Hancock, seen it, Resident Evil Degeneration. I need to buy that on Blu ray actually, I've got it on DVD. Zohan, scene, Punisher, Open Season, blah blah. The rest of it's rubbish. That's pretty much everything that comes with it. Oh, I think. Underneath the adverts, if you can see, there's just a little. Oh, it's reflecting the screen back at you. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, everybody knows Ghostbusters, don't they? It's awesome. There's the back if anyone's particularly bothered. Special features, factoid track, featurettes, photo gallery deleted scenes, wallpaper, commentary, storyboard comparisons, multi-angle shots and exclusive to Blu-ray, I should look at the camera there, Slimer mode, picture in picture. Don't know what that is. And Cine chat, send on screen instant messages to your friends 
around the world while watching the movie together. <laughs> awesome film, absolutely love it. That came this morning, Highlander. Every, well, not everybody loves it, but I do. Highlander Immortal Edition. It's the first film, Christopher Lambert, Sean Connery. There's the disc. It spawned quite a lot of sequels actually, but many of them not so good. This one's Ace, the soundtrack was done by Queen, and it's a very good soundtrack as well. Uh, they made a sequel which kind of implied that they were all, I don't think it's spoilers because it's been out nearly 30 years now. Uh, the second one implies that the Highlanders, who are actually immortals, um, are from an alien planet. So yeah, to quote this film, there can be only one. It's basically the Highlander Christopher Lambert, or Lambert, if you want to call him that. Uh, he plays Conor McLeod, Sean Connery plays Ramirez, his friend, and also immortal, who teaches him how to be immortal. Well, he doesn't teach him how to be immortal, he's already immortal. He teaches him how to live and deal with it uh, in the Highlands of Scotland. And then he proceeds to fight the Kurgan, his mortal enemy, or immortal enemy, I suppose, uh, in New York City in 1986. Great film, lots of sword play, brilliant. Now this, next one, is an absolute classic. When when did it come out? Uh, 1947. It's a Wonderful Life. James Stewart and Donna Reed. Brilliant film. Absolutely excellent. And there's the DVD cover because the other one was just a sleeve. And there's the disc. Now they've recolored this. It was originally in black and white. They've recolored it and it is one of the best recolorings I've ever seen. It looks like it was actually filmed in colour. It's that good. It's a great Christmas film, even though most of it doesn't really take place at Christmas. It follows the life of George Bailey uh, and his wife as everything goes wrong for him as he tries to become an adventurer and explorer with the National Geographic and everything in his life conspires to stop him until the point where he's ready to kill himself by jumping off a bridge so an angel who's trying to get his wings comes down to save him that's what you've probably heard the uh, the saying every time a bell rings an angel gets its wings or well, this is the film that it came from there was an unofficial sequel written in the late 80s <laughs> yeah no just don't don't go there next Mad Max 2 The Road Warrior. It's quite annoying that it keeps reflecting on the screen actually. Uh, Mel Gibson, the best Mad Max film out of the trilogy, or soon to become four because they're making a sequel and Mad Mel isn't in it, which is very disappointing. Uh, everyone knows what this is post apocalyptic Australia, road gangs and everything fighting. Mel Gibson just being Mel Gibson, being very intolerant of people, but Mel Gibson is awesome. Monty Python's Life of Brian. When this, the Immaculate Edition, nice. When this came out in, uh, when was it, 1980? No, 1979, I'll tell you why, 1979. It was, it was, it was ragged on by the church because they claimed it was blasphemous. There's the disc. To the life of Jesus Christ and there was a big interview and it had the made some major people in Christianity uh, basically having a go at the Pythons for making it. Uh, Michael Palin was clearly quite upset by this on the interview and John Cleese was basically just saying listen you're a bunch of morons we'll make what we want it's funny everyone else gets it you don't uh, which to be fair was right not the nine o'clock news spoof the interview um, claim uh, there's Rowan Axon playing a vicar reverend whatever and uh, he's supposed to have made a film that is a blasphemous attack on the life of Monty Python uh, with the final scene set in a hotel in Torquay uh, which he claims is actually in Torbay where there's thousands of Spanish waiters being clipped around the by Jesus Christ it's the same initials JC John Cleese Anyway, great film, hilarious. Always look on the bright side of life. Love that song. Next film. 
National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I love this film. It is a great Christmas film. And it's quite scary how much of myself I see in Chevy Chase's portrait of Clark Griswold. It really is. He wants to have the best family Christmas with his family. Things don't go to plan. Especially when his cousin Randy Quaid turns up. Uh, there's not really many extras with this. It's just a commentary. Randy Quaid, Beverly D'Angelo and Johnny Galecki. Uh, and Miriam Flynn, that's right, Johnny Galecki from The Big Bang Theory was in this as a youngster. Uh, which, I mean, I knew anyway, but you people probably didn't because you're, because you're movie plebs. <laughs> anyway, it's absolutely hilarious film. You've got to see it if you already haven't. I got this the other day. The Ultimate Rambo Collection. Rambo 1 to 4. Rambo 1, absolutely awesome. I can't even bother taking it all out, so... You know, Rambo 1, absolutely awesome. Rambo 2, kind of like an overlong A-team episode. And Rambo 3, absolute crap. Uh, Rambo 4, quite bloody and violent. Quite fun when once it starts picking up a bit. Uh, not many extras on here, I don't think. It's basically just the uh, little special features on First Blood. Rambo vs. Sly, an interview in Paris 2008. In fact, for the first three films, they are all interviews from the same year in the same place, Sly vs. Rambo. Uh, obviously there's more for just John Rambo because it's the latest one. And obviously that one translates better to Blu-ray being the newest one, it was recorded in HD. I don't know if you've read the book, if you haven't it's absolutely awesome that the original Rambo is based on. Uh, it's done in a sort of special ammo style case as well. Tango and cash, cash and tango. There you go. It's a uh, bit of bit of a treat there for, for Chris. My Jack Palance impression. He loves it when I do that at work. Ray Tango and Gabe Cash, Sly Stallone and Kurt Russell play the well, well the city's two best cops, and they uh, they get framed and sent to jail. They have to work together. They hate each other naturally. They have to work together to send the criminals to jail and sort of their own rotations and this blu-ray is the first time it's ever been released uncut in the uk in fact it's not been seen uncut in the uk tv dvd vhs since the cinema except for this next one time cop great film absolutely love it best van damme film out there steve may disagree probably will although he does like time cop as well everybody does Bit of time travel, bit of high kicking, fighting, awesome. Anyway, this is getting on for 20 minutes, so I should speed it up a bit. Weekend at Bernie's! This is an awesome film. It really is. I absolutely love this film. Watch it every single summer. I absolutely love it. There you go, there's a disc. In fact, I've ordered a poster, the movie poster from this, uh, from this film, which will be a dawn in my wall when it comes. Bernie may be dead, but he's still the life of the party. It features, it focuses on the two, you know, Andrew McCarthy and who's the other one? I've forgotten that. Uh, Silverman, Jonathan Silverman, that's it. Uh, go into their boss's beach house to point out that they've found some money missing from an account. Unfortunately, it's Bernie that's stolen it. Uh, he intends to have them killed, but he gets killed instead. They don't realise and then all the guests turn up for the party, so they have to pretend he's still alive, etc, etc. The life change shoes. Zombie Strippers. This was my first DVD, and it was about six pounds. I've yet to watch it. It's got Jenna Jameson in it, and, you know, looking like a, well, a dog, a zombie one, presumably. Uh, this came with some exclusive play.com art cards which I don't think I've even had out of the packet so this is a first time for no I haven't so this is a first time for me as it is for you you get a picture of Jenna Jameson as a zombie uh, I can't tell if that's her or not a woman as another zombie chewing down on stuff. 
Jenna Jameson again as a zombie and again as a zombie. Well, they were great. <laughs> so, let's pop all of those back in the box. Oh yeah, Robert England's in this as well. I'll, I'll get around to watching eventually, I just don't know. Well, I have had the chance, but I've got better films to watch. Uh, and that was my current Blu-ray list. Jesus Christ, 2027. I went on about Back to the Future too much, didn't I? Oh well. Uh, for now, tatty bye. See you next time I get some more games for the continuation of the PS3 games list. Ta-ta.